Greetings everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to look at playing with what the Americans refer to as spackle. But over here in Australia uh, we refer to this as polyfiller. And this particular one is an external polyfiller used for filling in masonry. So it has a, actually texture that's a bit grittier, a bit more like a mortar. And so we're going to try this on some bases. So sacrificial dude is a guy on a bike. And we're going to try putting some of this on the base. And it is a little bit old, whether that makes a difference or not, but it is horrendously difficult to get started. It doesn't adhere particularly well, uh, so you have to be a little bit persistent to smudge it onto the base until such time as it actually grips. But once you finally get the thing started with enough pressure, it will eventually start to adhere and then you can build it up to a reasonable thickness across the base. So we have got a little bit more complete there and as you can see we can start to shape it and move it around. Uh, if it's gone through the holes, which in this one, because it's the starter set, uh, we need to provide access to push the pins in for the model uh, that are on the base of the wheel like this. And so we line it up roughly where we want it to go. And what would be a good idea, I thought, was to actually continue the tread pattern as if it had actually created a track as it ran across the dirt. So I just used the wheels and kind of backed it up uh, over the top of the thing to leave an impression. You may not see it with a bike sitting on top, but I thought, ah, oh, for completion, let's just do that anyway. So once we've got it done, we can see that it actually looks somewhat realistic. And as usual, bits of sprue uh, are my go-to bits of rock for convenience uh, because they're nice and angular and small and light. So we just scatter a few of those across the base until such time as we have a reasonable sort of scattering. Now, what we can see with this material is it actually is quite soft and squishy and you can leave relatively fine marks in it. So you can actually sculpt with it if you like. Uh, and create some particular textures uh, that you would like across the surface. Now, next thing was to add some biological matter. So here's some sticks that I prepared earlier by running over with a lawnmower, and uh, they're nice and fragmented. So it's just a matter of choosing an appropriate one for the piece and just squashing it down into the actual material so that it grips on. Quick check to make sure it clears the model, and that appears to be all good. So we did a couple of these bases in a row. So I just build the material up thick enough to secure the wood and press it down into it. Perhaps uh, move a bit of round over the top just to secure it while it's drying. Try and get creative and put another one in just so it looks a little bit different, uh, just to vary it slightly. And uh, then again, add our little bits and pieces of rock and we'll get them squashed in there so that we've got something that looks somewhat irregular and does actually look like rock pieces. So that was the plan. Unfortunately when you squish it on it tends to go over the side so you have to sort of clean it up a little bit. Not too much of a drama to do so and voila that is one finished piece. So let it dry overnight. It takes about 24 hours given the thickness of it and we have taken it down to spray a black uh, primer coat over the whole surface and just building up progressively and slowly over time. Didn't want to rush it. So we took our time about manufacturing that shape and uh, that's what we ended up with. Now when you let it dry you'll notice that there's bits that you kind of missed and you've got to go over it again. Uh, so you have another shot at it just to make sure you've fully coated it because I want to make sure whatever I put on does adhere to the surface and uh, it might even take a third pass apparently. So just a little squirt here and there. And uh, just for uh, interest sake, I am using a 0.2 size needle on the airbrush uh, because I'm trying to do some fine work theoretically. And uh, I'm kind of new to all this, so I did practice and play around with it and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, this is what it ended up looking like. So now we come over with the white to give it a bit of a zenithal highlight in a way. So I did it from one side only, creating shadows on one side of the rocks and the wood to have a finished surface that looks kind of like that. And uh, just comparing the other one. So it sort of has a relatively even coating from one side and it's dark on the other. Now what I chose was to use some earth colors some inks 
and I put them into the airbrush and I've dialed the air pressure way down uh, to uh, the bare minimum that I could use and have the airbrush still functional to supply the paint and so it takes a little bit of time to sort of dust the surface uh, but fortunately it wasn't stupidly hot and I didn't have any blockages which was great the inks are quite thin uh, so they actually do a reasonable job of flowing out without clogging the brush. I did add a little bit of distilled water just to dilute it slightly. But all I did was sort of just progressively go over the surface uh, with the red oxide coloration, avoiding the wood because I didn't want it colored that way. And just sort of did all the dirt surfaces as such and uh, covered everything as best as I could but not worried too much about some grey showing up because I was going to go over it with another coat of the burnt umber colour. So we just continued on finishing that up and then apply the new coat and uh, we just sort of distribute that a little bit across the surface in a sort of a random pattern. We don't want it to be completely coated but we do want to get rid of sort of the grey coloration as best as possible so at least we have colour across the majority of the surface and just keep turning it around because of the texture we want to make sure we get it into all of those hidden areas as best as we can and next up we thought well with the wood we'll actually make it look like wood and so we just used army painters dark wood speed paint uh, and brushed that on to the wood that has been undercoated hopefully uh, being the speed paint it will pick out the sort of the grain and emphasize uh, sort of that sort of texture as it dries. It is quite absorbent, the wood though, and uh, the paint doesn't go very far, so you have to sort of apply a reasonable amount to it to get any result. Uh, but it sort of provides at least a natural looking piece of wood. We then decided to choose Uniform and Regiment Grey, which are just the Army Painter air colors uh, to sort of change maybe the color of the rock slightly and uh, we're just stuck with the at the end of the regiment gray uh, because the uh, uniform gray was a little bit too pale so we put that darker color on but uh, it's a bit wishy-washy but that was fine because i wanted the original color to underneath to show through uh, and that's the way we liked it but unfortunately it looked a little bit too gray so we decided well let's uh, experiment with some dry brushing and we got the army painter charred bone to begin with and just a light sort of scraping over the top of those proud sort of uh, rocks and bits of wood uh, the uniform surface doesn't really sort of pick it up that much and then we thought go a little bit lighter with the skeleton bone uh, in the army painter and just sort of highlighted a few particular areas on the tracks and a few raised sections just to emphasize those a little bit and play around with that to try and just lighten things up a little without sort of doing it over the entire surface and changing the entire look. So we managed to certainly lighten up rocks a fair bit and uh, as a consequence of that we thought well actually that might be a little bit too white. Uh, we might need to play with that so uh, ultimately we went back and uh, tried another option after that because there was just a little bit too much white showing so we came in with another speed paint this time runic gray and we watered it down quite a lot no i didn't want to put it on straight because i'm really after a wash here i just want to lightly color them so i got a finer brush and just dabbed that color onto the rocks to provide mottling a bit of variation trying to make it look a little bit more natural less pale and so just dull things down a little and it's nice and translucent and so when it dries you get a reasonable sort of kind of graying without being as gray as the original regiment gray that was put on so finally that looked a little bit better so it's time to dress the actual thing up a little bit and we got some of the army painter tufts and they come with a bit of a gum backing which is sort of slightly sticky but uh, the tufts are a bit too large so i sliced and diced to get them into irregular shapes and then uh, to adhere them, just use a bit of the gel super glue to the base of those and just with a bit of tweezers so your fingers don't get stuck to it. I uh, just dab them on in a couple of places to provide a little bit of variety to make it look a little bit more natural. Then we decided uh, I've just got these dirty down uh, paints thought it would be nice to actually give them a bit of a go. I saw the moss uh, being used and uh, thought well that looks quite good and so I put it on straight and ultimately it looked a little bit too green, too dense a colour. Fortunately it says that oh water can sort of wash it around a little bit so that's exactly what I did, just wet a brush and dabbed it all over the thing trying to dissipate that coloration which looked a little bit too intense 
and then we decided to play with the rust because we're trying to sort of emulate sort of the ferric oxide type coating uh, on natural rocks as the iron sort of stains and so that was relatively easy just dabbing that all on and ultimately the end result sort of looked like a pile of rocks sitting on some dirt with some logs and grass so it actually turned out quite well so I was relatively happy with the end result for the first time I've ever made a base so thank you again for coming along and watching this it's been a lot of fun this time around I know we're finally doing something creative so thanks again if you've made it this far and uh, we'll keep trying to increase the enjoyment level of these videos so until next time have a great day thank you